On today's video, what is ACX? Getting started, how do I get paid? Audiobook calculations and one thing to think about. So ACX stands for Amazon's Audiobooks Creation Exchange. So basically Amazon saw a niche to create some audiobooks which can be uploaded and created by independent authors since they did so well with the uh, Kindle and Kindle Unlimited programs. Um, so these are the opportunity for me and others to upload our work and get paid for it without having to go through a traditional publishing company. So authors and producers and narrators can connect, they can post projects, they can post samples of your work. Um, if you're an author who narrates your own book, you can directly upload everything that you need to do. You get finished and approved audiobooks can be found on Amazon, Audible, and Apple iTunes. You can choose to go exclusive with the company, or you can choose to go non-exclusive. And there are some differences in that, and we'll go over that in just a little bit. So there's all sorts of listeners from the U.S., the United Kingdom, Canada, Germany, France, Australia, and Japan. So something important to remember, if you do choose to sign up for this service, you're agreeing to a seven-year term, and it automatically renews each year. Now, don't worry, doesn't mean that you're pigeonholed into exclusive or not exclusive it just means that you're there for the seven years, and if after 90 days you want to change your category of exclusive to non-exclusive or vice versa, you can. So let's get started. Now, it seems like, you see the beautiful video above, there's just so many forms. It's actually not that difficult, especially being from a foreign country, considering the U.S., Canada, Canada. So... There you Right now, you have to be from the United States, the United Kingdom, Canada, or Ireland to be able to upload your files. This will change in the future as they expand the program, but right now, those are the ones who can actually do it. You need an email, so I'm pretty sure you've already got an email. So I know it looks like a long list of seven, but you got an email. You create a password. It can be any password you like. Uh, <laughs> recommend using a strong one. You need an address. So since most of us have a home, you've already got that. It's just something that to have on hand, know it, be able to do those what, three, four things before you get started. The other one, which seems a little bit more daunting, is tax information. Basically, you need your tax number. As a Canadian, this would be your social insurance number. So it was really easy for me. I just clicked off that uh, you know, I came from a tax treaty company, sorry, country, and that I had a social insurance number or TIN in what they like to call it, tax number. And then I put that information in, done, voila. Your banking information. So this was actually a little bit more interesting. Um, finding my bank account information was not very difficult at all because if you have a void check or if you have a bank account withdrawal slip form from your bank, it literally will say underneath, this is your transit number, this is your bank number, this is your account number, and you just fill in those numbers. It's really easy that way, not a big deal. Now, what was more difficult was finding out my SWIFT routing number. So I don't know if they need that if you're in the U.S., I don't believe you do, but for me being a Canadian, I needed to know what my routing number was for Swift. This, I had to call my bank. Shout out to the lovely lady that I talked to at my credit union. It's not a bank, it's a credit union. It's kind of the same difference in some ways and other ways not. So she did a wonderful job explaining it to me. We got it done. I was on the computer, on the phone, and took about 20 minutes, mainly because we chit-chatted in between as well. How much does an audiobook sell for in stores? So this is just kind of a guideline that I have put up here that is directly from the Amazon website. Now, again, well, I guess Audible's website. Now, again, individual stores will charge different rates. So this is not set in stone, but it just gives you a general idea. So if you're under an hour's worth of audio files, it's going to be under $7. If it's one to three hours, it should be ranged between seven to ten dollars. If you're three to five hours, it should range from ten to twenty dollars. Now, most of us are going to be in the five 
to 10 hour range. And that's 15 to $25 per book. Now, you're not going to see all that money. And we'll get to the breakdown in a minute. If you have a wonderful, wonderful, prolific word count, you could be in the 10 to 20 hour range and make 20 to $30 per book. And if it's over 20 hours, your book should sell between $25 to $35. This should be in US dollars as well, just for anybody who's wondering. So let's do some fun math. Most of us average an audiobook between 5 to 10 hours in length. That means a minimum sale of $15 and a maximum sale of $25. Now, if you are exclusive, this means that you will not be selling with anyone except for Audible, who also sells with iTunes at the Apple Store and what was the other one? I think on Amazon. That's what it was, on Amazon. So if you are exclusive with Audible, you can get up to 40% of a royalty. Now, this depends, again, on whether or not you're splitting your royalty with a producer or with a narrator. If you've done it all yourself, you can get home that 40%. So that would mean your minimum royalty from each book should be around $6 and your maximum should be around 10 now, if you're non-exclusive like I am, I am non-exclusive because I'm also putting my books on YouTube and I can also put them on other platforms as well. This means I only get 25% and that's also because I'm not splitting my royalty with anyone. So that gives me a minimum of $3.75 and a maximum of $6.25 revenue per book. One thing to think about. While you're setting up all this lovely stuff, you might be thinking, but what if I only sell one book? Well, you're not going to get paid that month. Sorry, that balance will roll forward to the next month. So the thing is, Audible will not make a royalty payment of less than $50. So that means some months you're not necessarily going to make a pay get a payment until your volumes of sales is high enough. And yes, like I said, it rolls over and eventually you will get it, but just not right away. You also want to check your bank for wire money transfer fees. The good news is because Audible won't send anything more than, well, sorry, anything less than $50. That means that my $15 that my bank is going to charge me for that wire transfer is coming out of that royalties, which does kind of suck. So it might be a case of knowing whether or not you're going to make enough sales to make it worth your time to get take all the time to make this production to pay that wire transfer fee to pay any other fees such as your covers your narrator your producer your equipment things like that it's just something to think about whether or not you want to make that investment just thought you should be aware so stay tuned for the next video on Audible, where we talk about what sort of things you might need to know before you upload, before you record, or even just the technical stuff, which I have to admit, I don't really know all of it, but I can lead you through how it sort of works. Anyhow, I hope you enjoyed this video, and I hope that you will come and view the next one as well. Happy reading and happy listening.